We're going to conclude this series here that we've been on for a little while called Life Lessons. And, um, you know, before we conclude, I just want to give this last, but definitely not least, actually last, but most important message here before we move on. And I'm going to talk about Jesus. And of course, every message we bring out, uh, wh- how it relates to our lives with, with Christ and, and who he is. But, but today, I'm just going to talk about Jesus plus nothing. There's a, a book, actually, that, that somebody wrote called Jesus plus nothing equals everything. And, and to, to wrap our minds around that and to understand that is, is everything, really. Um, if we can stop adding to who he is, if we, if we can understand that, that we truly can't, add anything, our strength, our knowledge, our understanding, anything that, that we can bring does not factor into our relationship with God. We just bring ourselves to him and love him and who he is, and, and that is what brings us into this relationship. That is what we need to understand today. Second Corinthians 11, in verse 3, it says, but I fear lest somehow a serp- as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And so he's speaking here. He's, saying, he's like, guys, I-, I want you to understand. I mean, if you read through the, the scriptures in-, in the New Testament and you see many times there's argument over, you know, we follow this person or this person says that we need to do this ritual or this thing and, you know, this is how you you know, uh, are a Christian if you do these things. And he's like, listen, you need to understand that the gospel is simply just the gospel. There's nothing that can be added to it. If we can understand that, that it's Christ plus nothing that gains us this relationship, that gives us everything that we need, then, then we will be a step up in every area of our lives. And I love that he says the simplicity that is in Christ. The simplicity. So many times we try to add, and even here in the scripture back then, whenever he was speaking to these, these people he's in the churches, he's like, guys, you can't add. You can't add ritual. You can't add your own philosophy or understanding. You can't Base your life with God on, on what this person says. It has to be the gospel. You know, we, we come together and hear a message and under, get uh, some, some great encouragement and, and, and teaching on the Bible. But I want to say, even with, with me, like you, you can't rest your whole relationship with God on what I'm saying. Of course, every single time that I come, I want to be straight from the Word of God and, and speaking just the gospel. But you can't rest your whole life on that. You need to be resting your life on who Christ is. Having that relationship and, and understanding of who He is yourself. I'm just here to encourage and to help. It's not something that anybody or something that you can add that brings us where we need to be. It's just the simplicity of who Christ is and what he's done for us. And it's not that we seek to to replace Jesus. That that we think, oh, well, you know, I'm not going to follow Christ. I'm going to follow this. But the problem is, is that so many times we tend to add things to who he is. We need to add our own strength or our own knowledge or this person's book says you need to do it this way. And, and I'm telling you, if it, if it doesn't go along with the, what the Bible teaches, then it needs to be thrown out, first of all. But then you also can't just base your life in Christ on someone's book. It's this book. Reading and studying, and, and, and there's great books out there. There's great things, that great teachings. The pastor is speaking these great messages. But we have to allow those things to be taught 
to us, but not allow those, those things to lead us, but the gospel, the Bible, who Christ is. That's what it's all about. See, our relationship with Christ is a, is a no-ad recipe, you know? It's like, you see, I, 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 <laughs> I think it's funny. It's frustrating to me sometimes. You know, you see somebody, and they're just fired up about something. It's like, I can't believe that they added Red 40 to this Kool-Aid, you know? And then, but they're totally okay with adding to who Jesus is, you know, their, their own strength or, or their own will or what they want, you know? But you better not put Red 40 in my Kool-Aid, you know? I, I, anybody? Anybody else? You know, there's so many things. We get focused on something, and you can't add to this thing but, I, but I'm totally neglecting the fact that I may be adding something of my own self to who Christ is. That maybe somehow I can do it. That, that something I've done that's brought me into this relationship with him. You know, my works. And, and in the scripture, you know, there's, it's, it's our faith alone that brings us into this relationship. It's not works, but, but our life with him should produce something. It should produce works. It's not the works that brings our relationship, but our relationship should bring difference, a, a, a change in our life that produces something in us. It's him alone. Nothing added. We're building our identity or, or who we on who we are on something else besides just the simplicity of the gospel? Are we leaning on our own understanding, our own strength? Are we leaning on somebody else's wisdom? There's lots of great stuff, even the good stuff. Are, you, are we trying to lean too much on that instead of coming ourselves into the presence of God, learning and growing and finding who he is? Because I'm telling you, somebody else's relationship with God is not going to give you a relationship with God. There's studies, many studies have been done, of course, but it says here that, you know, more than half, like 52% of Christian survey said that both good deeds and faith are needed to get into heaven. And also, the same uh, number, 52% uh, of Christians say that you should look for guidance from teachings, books, and in a way of, of placing our relationship in somebody else's hands. And, and, and like I said, we want to learn, we want to, to see these things all around us that have been given revelation to pastors or to those that are writing these great books, but, but are you basing your relationship on those things? Are you basing it on who Christ is with you personally? Those things should not take the place of your personal relationship. In Matthew twenty-two forty-two. 42, Jesus said, what do you think about the Christ? He's coming. And of course, he was like the master of asking questions that would just dig the ground right out from people's feet, you know? And they think, you know, these, these guys, these Pharisees, these Sadducees, all these, uh, you know, knowledgeable people are smart. Coming at Jesus. And, and he was able to just come and ask this question and, and really trip them up. And I want to ask that question too, and I hope that, that it trips us up in a good way. Who do we think Christ is? What is your understanding about Jesus? Like, how, how well do you understand who he is and what he's done for us? And I want to take that question every single day and ask myself that question because you know what that question brings? It brings the second question is, who do I think I am then? 
Because the problem is, is that, that when we stop understanding who Jesus is, we start thinking more about who we are and how strong we are, how strong I am, how much I'm doing. Look at these great things that I was able to do yesterday, you know? Like somehow I did it on my own or that I'm not alive because he says I can be alive, you know? Like, I, I, it's him and him only. It's Christ. And I want to ask myself, I want us to ask ourselves, who do we think, when, when we bring that to the forefront of our mind and start thinking about that, like what we focus on, what we think about becomes prominent and becomes who we are. I want to be like Christ. I want to be like Jesus. And of course, none of us are perfect. We can't do it alone. I can't. I don't know about you, and, and this is, you know, you might think, well, that's different than what I've heard. But I, I think it's awesome to say, I, I have no idea sometimes. I don't know everything. I can't, we can't possibly know everything. So to go around acting like you've got the answers is just silly. But I love to think, you know why I love to think that? I love to think I don't know everything because that makes me so much more lean on God for the things that I need. I, I don't have the strength to make, and maybe I can make it tomorrow. Maybe there's little stuff that i got to walk through tomorrow. It won't be that hard or whatever. And I may be able to make it through the next day after that on my own strength. But eventually I'll get to a place where I can't do it on my own. So why not just say every day I can't do it on my own? You know? Why not just say, hey, I can't do it. Not that you can't do it, but you can't do it alone. We weren't made to do this on alo alone or on our own strength. We were made to have this relationship with him. We were made to lean into who Christ is and allow him to do his work in our life and change us so that we can be all that he has created us to be. I mean, he created us. Why not go back to the creator? Why not go back to him and say, I may be nothing on my own, but with you, I'm everything that I need to be. With you, I have all the strength that I need to have. With you, I can make it through the day. With you, I can know the things that I'm supposed to know. Not in my own knowledge, but God, the knowledge of who you are can bring everything that I need to my life. What do we think about Christ? And what do we think about ourselves? I mean, that's the question. Because when we think highly of ourselves, it brings who we are into the forefront brings our own strength, our own knowledge, whatever we can do. And I want to bring Christ into the forefront of our lives. Amen? Colossians 2, verse 8, says, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy or empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world. I love it. It says basic. They're just basic. The principles of the world, the things that, that are worldly and, and the things that we can learn that the world can come up with, they're just basic compared to what God has. You want real understanding? You want real revelation? Ask God. That is not basic. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting a little fired up a little bit. Verse 9, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him. God, I, I, help me. I need to, you know, we ask. It's like, I, I just, I, I feel incomplete, or there's something missing. And, and then we try to fill it in with other things. Like, if I could make just enough money, in, or if I could, you know, get this understanding of, of this thing that I'm, 
I'm trying to learn. It's all of a sudden, it's going to make me complete. But I'm telling you, just like it says here in the scripture, you are made complete in him. In him you have all that you need. In him we move and have our being. Like it's, you're searching for answers. There's no other place you need to go besides to him. Paul, speaking to the Philippians, and, and this, you know, if you don't know about him, he was very well educated. He knew all the things about Jewish, the Jewish religion and tradition, and he had studied and, and studied. All, I mean, he was higher level religious guy. I mean, he was up there. He knew it all. He knew all the, 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 you know, I have to wash my hands this many times. I have to walk this way. I got all the scriptures memorized. I've got all this stuff. But we see later on, after he had had this encounter with God and, and this revelation of who Christ was and what he had done with us, and he's speaking here to the Philippians, and he is telling us what he thinks about what he previously knew and the knowledge that he had. And I love this. In verse 7, it says, But what things were gained to me, the previous things, the things that I thought that they, they added to my life, those things that I thought were gain, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss. All things, everything else is a loss for the excellence of of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. He said, I'll, I'll suffer the loss of everything else if I can have a relationship with God, with Christ. If he's with me, nothing else matters. And he says, I count them as rubbish that I might gain Christ and be found in him. I love that. Can I, anybody else just want to be found in him? Anybody looking for me? If you want to know where I am, if you come looking for me, just know. Like, well, well, he's there in Christ. That's what I want somebody to say about me. I would love to be found. You're looking for me and you find me, I'm in Christ. He says, I count them all as rubbish. This word, rubbish, Zamia or Zemia. Anybody know what it means? Anybody? Anybody? Quiz, pop quiz. Y you heard it earlier. Stop it. <laughs> this word means damaged or lost. They use the word loss up here, but they use rubbish here in this other verse. And this word Zamia means damaged. He's saying, all these things that I counted as gain before, all these things that I thought that I knew, all these things that the world brings, that, that the world comes up with, and philosophy, and, and all these ways, you see, oh, well, you can get to Christ this way, or God, or heaven, you can, you can do it this way, or that way, or this way. He says, it's rubbish, or zemia. You know what it is? It's damaged. It's damaged. Nobody wants damaged goods, right? I don't want to hold on to things that are damaged. And he's saying these things that aren't Christ, that aren't God, they may have seemed good at one point in our life, but if we can understand that they're damaged, that everything that you need is in Christ and only Him. And we often think that, you know, it's like, oh, Christ is a part of my life. I, he's, God is a part of my life. A part. And I don't want Him to be a part of my life. I want Him to be my life. He, he's supposed to be. That doesn't mean you don't do, you, like you just sit there. 
and do nothing. For him to be your life just means that every day that you walk, you step outside of your door, you can walk with him. When you go to work, when you go to school, when you're out in the grocery store, you can be with him. Everything that you need is in him, and he can walk. It's not that you don't do anything. It's just what you're doing. Can you do it with him and not without him? Or not without this other thing that somehow adds to who he is. He's everything that we need. Colossians 1. In verse 16, I'm going to start halfway through, and it just says, All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. So again, that question, what do we think of our Christ? Who do you think he is? And I'd submit today that when we come to the understanding of who he is, that all things were made through him and for him, all things are in him. Everything that we need, that we could possibly want or need, can can be found in who Christ is. I just want to feel fulfilled. I'm telling you, looking for it in another place is not going to do anything for you. It's like empty calories, right? Like these things. It's like you eat salad, and you can fill up on salad and be hungry in 30 minutes, man. You know what I'm saying? I love salad, but... It's like these... It's something that... that, that that gives you this instant gratification but doesn't last that long. When we look for who we are or fulfillment in other things besides Christ, it's just like that. It might feel good for a few minutes, but then all of a sudden it wears off and you realize that that thing didn't sustain you. And there's not really any food I can compare to Christ because, because in Him it's, it, it doesn't wear off. The fulfillment and the, the fullness that we feel in Christ does not wear away when we're staying with him and in him. It's not like somebody, you know, he's people, uh, I don't know if I want to get into this. Okay. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things going on now where like people that have been well known are, are coming in and, and saying, well, you know, now I'm adding this to what I once believed. Nope. Nope. I just, uh, just stay over there. I don't, uh, no, no, you can't add. You can't add. And, uh, don't, don't tell me that somehow you've figured something out that doesn't come from here. You, you can't figure anything else out. Everything came from him, through him, by him. All things are in him. Don't tell me there's like, well, but then this other thing. Okay, see ya. Good luck, bro. <laughs> You can't add to Jesus. It's Jesus plus nothing. Not my gifts. Look, I mean, God has gifted us in many different ways, in, in many different things. I mean, some of us, these guys down here, Mikey, Matt, are gifted, gifted musically. I didn't get that. I, I would like to have it, but I, I didn't give it. There's, there's different things, not just, you know, music, but different things that God has given us, our personality, the way we're wired and what we can do, how we can do it. There's things that he's given us, but that gifting does not bring us to a relationship with God. Standing up here and worshiping or singing, I should say, does not bring playing the guitar really good and having a good solo. There's Mikey back here like does not gain us a relationship with Christ. What this is up here is, is, is worship. It's just us expressing our love and our gratitude for him. But that does not bring a relationship. It 
does not bring what we need. It's not my gifting. It's not our knowledge or our experiences. We've walked through it. And I love that God uses, right? He can work all things out for good. He can take the biggest mess, stuff that, I, that we've walked through that, that it, it's just bad. It's not good. We, it's like I can't even believe that that happened in my life. But he can take that and work it out for the good of those who love him, I can say, God, I just submit all that to you, and I just pray that whatever happened, you help to teach me and use me to help somebody else in it. I, I, that's all I could say. Somehow, maybe I'll be able to help somebody else that's going through that thing. But those experiences or the good things, the things that we've accomplished, don't add anything to our relationship. It's just him. It's just who he is. How can we get past things? How can we, you know, it, I think about whenever we're struggling or whenever we're trying to figure something out, that's when we start searching all around, trying to, you know, seek out the answer, you know? But to understand that he is the answer is where we need to be. In Galatians 5.1, it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty of by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again to the yoke of bondage. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. How do we find our way? How do we get past this thing that we're walking through? It's in him. It's with him. He's what we need. Of course, he wants us to stand up and walk with him, but to have the understanding that it's not me, it's not us that does it, but it's him. I just get to walk with him. I just get to come along with God and see what he does in my life. I want God to do great things through me. I want people to say, wow, Josh was able to speak into my life. There was so many great things that happened through Josh's life. I mean, way longer on in the end of my life, right? Like, happened in his life. But I don't ever want them to say that I did something. I want them to say that, he, that God did something. That Christ was able to do something in me and through me. It's, it's, not, it's not me. It's not us. It's him. He's everything that we need. How do I get forgiveness? How, where, where does forgiveness come from? It comes from him. Ephesians 1, 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Forgiveness is found in him. Not because, not because we are good enough or have made our way to a place, but because he's made his way to us. I mean, that's the most gracious thing that I could possibly imagine, that, that he made his way from heaven to earth to, to, to die on the cross for us so that I could be free from sin and bondage. It wasn't anything that I did. It wasn't anything that we did. Anybody ever did. It's just him. And the love that he had for us. Would you stand with me?